Hi, and welcome to Screens and Focus, the podcast where we talk about your favorite TV shows and movies. I'm Diana, and today we are talking about The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, Episode 4. I'm ready to talk about this. I'm wondering about Renee. Renee, how's it going? Good here. How about you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. We're we're going to jump into it because I, for on my part, I think that there's a lot to talk about. But I did want to start off with the very beginning of this episode. We hear a song, and it's "Tie a Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree" by Tony Orlando and Dawn. And that particular record really resonated with me, which I'll share with you in just a moment. But it got me to thinking to our question of the day. And so I wanted to know from you and from our friends out there, what was your first record or album or anything that had an impact on you? So the first, that the question I thought was like, what you ever purchased? And so that's what yes, I focused purchased. on. purchased. So it is purchased. Yeah. I'll tell you what it was. But until that point, I just listened to my parents' old records for a long, many years. Yeah. So I think it was like 1983, I bought Rick Springfield Living in Oz. <laughs> so that was like the first one I bought with my money and I still have yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so cool. Wait, is that an actual record or is it like an album? It's an album. An album. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because- I remember listening to that song, Tie a Ribbon Around Old Oak Tree, mm -hmm. when I was a kid. And I, I'm i sure I loved the song because I still could sing along with it when it was yeah. playing. But I told my sister, she was uh, much older than me. And I said, I really want this record. So we went to the store and she got it for me. Yeah. And I would say my first actual album that I ever bought was Elton John albums. I used to buy mm -hmm. a lot of Elton John albums because what kept me busy as a kid was watching TV. And listening to radio and yeah. music. So it was fun. But I still want to know why they picked that song. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious as to that particular song because it's from the 70s. And yeah. I would love to know from. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. yeah, There's been several interviews with Denai and Gimple and Lincoln. I don't know. I haven't, I guess I haven't seen anything to indicate what, why that one was chosen. So yeah, yeah. I think it would be, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So friends out there, what about you? What is your first record, album, CD, digital download, whatever it may be? What is the first one you ever purchased? And, you know, probably has a significance to you. Mm -hmm. So we would love to know. You can comment here on YouTube or on any of our social media, which you can get to screensandfocus.com because all the links are there. And it is also in our show notes. All right. Is there any news, Renee, that you might have? Not that I have, yeah. And I can't think of anything. Yeah, I don't think I have any news either. The only thing I wanted to mention was, because today is Monday, we're, we're recording on a Monday today. And I saw that Denai was going to talk with Yvette Nicole Brown today sometime on oh. Instagram. And I've been waiting for it all day. I'm like, when is it? What is it? So I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting for that. Of course, it will have passed by the time this episode drops, but maybe you can watch it back, you know, through their feed. Mm -hmm. But I'll be interested to know what that mm -hmm. conversation entails. Yeah. And I actually asked my question of Taya Ribbon Run, the old oak tree in that because, mm -hmm. you know, they say, ask us questions. Yeah, so that'd be cool. Yeah. I don't know if they'll answer it, but I put it out there anyway. Yeah. Okay, so let's just go ahead and dive into the episode. It's episode four entitled What We, and it's written by Denai Guerrera. This is a Rashon, a Rashon, listen to me, a Rick and Michonne centric episode on their emotional journey. And I just want to know what your overall thoughts on the episode and your reaction was to it. So I am in the minority and I was not as emotional as everybody. Well, I was experiencing emotions, but not the same emotions, I guess, as everyone else, because I just kept getting mad at Rick <laughs> and I understand, you know, I mean, I'll elaborate more when we get to those segments and things, but I mean, I understand that he is going through PTSD. I understand there's a lot of stuff going on there, but I was still mad at him and that's just how I felt. <laughs> And, but I also, on the other side of that, I think that Denai kicked butt as a writer and an actress in this episode. So it was, you know, kind of like this two sides of me, like experiencing it. So it'll be interesting to see as we continue 
um, our varying opinions on this episode. I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good because then we get to see each other's sides and, you know, everybody watches with different eyes yeah. and perspective and background and experiences. So it means a lot to different people. So I will tell you, I cried like a baby through out, not just one part, like a lot of parts. I was just highly emotional. Mm -hmm. It just really hit me. I felt very satisfied. You know, the opening sequence was riveting to me. Mm -hmm. Everything in between was gut wrenching mm -hmm. and the ending was so exciting and so good. And I'm going to let you know that my husband, when I kept getting emotional, I turned to him and I said, I keep having tears, you know, because he doesn't look at me when we're watching the TV. Yeah. He's just watching that. So I have tears coming down my face. I'm like, I'm really emotional. So you are. He's all, I'm mad. So just so you know, he was probably, two of us. Yeah, he was probably on the same wavelength as you. Now, I mean, he didn't say anything afterwards. And now yeah. I actually have to go back and see what his thought on it, because, because it was so much about those two mm -hmm. and their journey and this love story. I kept thinking, oh, is he going to get bored or they're not mm -hmm. going to show any zombies or they're not going to show any action, but he didn't say a word. So he must've been in it. Yeah. <laughs> and there was uh, action in there also. Mm -hmm. So I think that that helped. All right. So it begins with where it left off mm -hmm. on episode three with the helicopter crash and their arrival into this penthouse apartment, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of the place and how it initially started out for them and their reaction to one another? So I, I thought the posh apartment was a little strange, but interesting at the same time that it was still intact. And why is it, you know, is this a CRM? You, I, yeah, it's just very odd because it seems like the CRM is the only one with the resources to do this. But I yeah. So anyway, it would be kind of interesting to find out why that was where, and where it was, you know, because it, it didn't seem like they were flying for very long, but who, we don't know. We, you know, they, yeah. they, they, it's hard to tell where they were, but anyway, yeah, I thought it was interesting anyway. And, you know, I like, I love seeing that I mean, we were all like in shock that she, they jump out of the hell or she yeah. jumps and pulls him out of the helicopter, but it saved their lives because then the helicopter's in the other building, you know? And so I thought that yeah. was like, Oh good. You know, <laughs> she made the right choice, you know, even though we all thought she was crazy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I also thought the information that Rick shared that when the helicopter was coming, it was like, Oh crap, they found them. How'd they find them already or whatever. But it was them coming to destroy the evidence of the, the, the helicopter and everything. So, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting because it kind of, you know, it's how they keep their identity safe. But that answers a lot yeah. of questions. How do we not see more throughout the other series, more yes. evidence of them? It's because they go and take care of it. So I thought that was True. Yes. yeah, a good way to answer that. So I thought that was good. And I loved that the tension between them was addressed right away. They, they didn't like stand around and act like everything was normal for a while. And then, you know, live, Oh, this house and blah, blah, blah. And then it come to a head. I was glad that, you know, they, they met it head on because it needed to be done, you know? And yeah. so I really liked that. But when I first got mad at Rick was when Michonne is like, oh, if they're destroying that, they assume we're all dead. They have no idea. Let's go. We can go now. We're, we're free. And he would not, you know, I'm like, Rick, what the heck? Here I is know. your opportunity. I know. It just is one of those things where I just got so frustrated. I mean, and I understand he's got, this is not the Rick that we know. I understand yeah. that. But at the same time, I was still very ticked off about yeah. that. Because yeah. It was like, Michonne's like, this is it. This is our, this is our opportunity. And anyway, that was my first time of being mad at Rick. <laughs> I think actually in a way that is, I mean, I was bothered by him and I, I would, did want to shake him. Yeah. But I kept thinking in my mind, you're going to come around. You're going to come around. Because if he didn't come around, and I know we're jumping all the way to the end here, but but actually, if he didn't come around, I would have been pissed off too. Mm -hmm. But I think it's okay for us to be pissed off because that, oh, yeah. that is shows how much we are invested mm -hmm. in him and what he represents and them as a couple and everything else. Because mm -hmm. if we didn't care, then, yeah. you know, yeah, we just it wouldn't, wouldn't care. Anything. So, yeah. So a mom, 
I, we know more information yes. at this moment. We know more information than he does. So, yes. you know, there was that too. But I think as a mom, I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, you are a dad. You need to get, a, you know, even though he only doesn't even know about RJ at this moment, right. you know about Judith, you know, get home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. exactly. So I thought that initial scene right when they walk in, mm -hmm. and I thought it was so beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It just really caught my eye. So it was the direction mm -hmm. that that was because I thought the backdrop, the room, those two yeah. looking at each other and they're both like shocked at each mm -hmm. other's actions because mm -hmm. he can't believe that she threw them out and she can't believe that he broke up with her and said we're broken. <laughs> it's like, what? And you're right. It was like this shock and anger between mm -hmm. those two. And I just thought that kind of set the tone for the rest of the episode. And I just thought that that was really, really well done. Yeah. Um, I also really appreciated they had moments of silence where they would just look at each other and they wouldn't say anything. And because there was so much text and, and words in this, I really enjoyed the silence that they mm -hmm. had too. And there's a lot to me, when I see actors or when I've taken acting or done acting, mm -hmm. those silences can be, are actually harder than mm -hmm. speaking the words. So, yeah. so I just really appreciated that with the both of them. And I thought that that penthouse, I wondered about it because you're right. It was so immaculate. It was so mm -hmm. high end. How is the Roomba still working? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was waiting because they turned on the water, they flushed the toilet. Yeah. I'm like, is there going to be a bathroom scene? Are they going to take a shower, <laughs> a bath together? What are they going to do? No, they didn't, damn it. But, <laughs> but we did see Michonne change mm -hmm. and he looked at her as she was changing. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh my God. And then of course he sees the scar on her back, which mm -hmm. we talk about later and, and we can talk about that later too. But mm -hmm. anyway, I just wanted to, to bring out my initial uh, reaction to, to all of that. Mm -hmm. So the bulk of the episode is about so many confrontations and revelations and Rick learns about his son and just, there's so many, so much tensions up and down. It really was like a marriage marriage, mm -hmm. you know, a life in a marriage. Mm -hmm. I really felt that. I thought Denai had done such a great job writing this. And, mm -hmm. and and I know that there was a lot of repetitiveness about what they were arguing about, but isn't that what happens in fights? You keep bringing mm -hmm. up your point over and over again because you want mm -hmm. the other person to hear what you have to say. Exactly. So what did you think? What stuck out to you or what mm -hmm. moved you or what made you even matter? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my second reason I got mad at Rick is when he just stands there when she tells him about his son who is eight years old. It's like this person has been on this earth for eight years and you're just standing there. You know, it's like yeah. he, and all he wants to all he's worried about is that little unit to call back to yes. the CRM, you know, and it's like, Rick, snap out of it. You know, you would think that, that, you know, like, is, you know, we don't understand his trauma right now. We're, we're still kind of like, we understand what he's been through, but there's been things that we don't know. We, you know, there's a lot we don't know, right. obviously, because right. this is extreme, you know? And so I, again, I understand that, but you would think at some point seeing Michonne, hearing about Judith, hearing about his children, plural, that would wake him up at least a bit to like, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is what I'm fighting for. And it just didn't happen. And so it was just frustrating. You know, I, my actual thing that I wrote in my notes was, but for Pete's sake, your wife tells you as a son and you, you yeah. know, it's, you know, it was yeah. just very frustrating. And so I, but I loved how she was very vocal about her, you know, she wasn't, even though she can tell he's going through something, she mm -hmm. wasn't holding back. She was upset no. had every right to be. And just yeah. tells him, you know, this is this and this is this, you know. And it, like you said, they did. I loved how it's written like a couple. You may have had an experience with this with a significant other or a yeah. spouse or a someone, you know. And yeah. so it's, it's, you know, it was, it was very real. And I loved that. And then I, you know, also, you know, then my other thoughts were like, how does Rick think he's going to go back and continue Okafor's plan in his present state of mind without any help? Who's going to help you? You don't have anybody because you don't know, you know, as far as we know, it, he, Okafor didn't mention, I mean, he may have had other allies willing to do this, but Rick doesn't know who they are. And now who knows what's going on with Thorn? You know, she, is she loyal to the CRM or is she still loyal to Okafor's plan? You know, 
Well, he says Thorne is all, you know, all that. So he made yeah. it sound like he had really right. lost that as a contact, which it seemed like that way to me mm-hmm. yeah. already, mm-hmm. but I wasn't sure. And so yeah, the fact that's that how I was confirmed yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he said it, but of course that's what he thinks. We don't really know. Maybe she's yeah. playing Okafor and playing the good soldier and doing her thing. We don't know, but the, despite, you know, okay. So two of them, how are they doing this? You know, I mean, I get that the serum is huge and he understands the enormity of how this and the, you know, what they are capable of, but you know, they've left them alone for this long. Why would they all of a sudden? Anyway, I just, just really was curious how Rick thinks he could have done that on his own in his, you know, where he at is at right now in his mind. So. Yeah. So true. I love all those questions, but <laughs> it was, yeah, it was frustrating to see Rick, how lost he is. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I'm, I watch it. And then today I'm, I'm reflecting more on it and I'm sure we'll change as the days go yep. by, as we hear, <laughs> as we think, because I was reading also a lot of articles that they were, where they were interviewed and what they thought mm-hmm. and, and just the writing of this. So it helps you along. It definitely mm-hmm. helps you along. Mm-hmm. But I, I do want to say their arguments or confrontations with each other were, I like that we learn more about each of them and their story as it's going mm-hmm. on, because we learn more about Michonne's backstory. Mm-hmm. And I know it's, it, it could be minor, but the fact that she picks up that book and she says, oh, this was my favorite as a kid. I'm taking it home to Judith. And And then she makes that remark to Rick about all the majors that she went through Mm -hmm. or or that she was going to pursue. But then she says, oh, the creative writing here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you write to your son and tell him the choice (laughs) that you made that you're not coming back? So good. This is so good because it is something that you would want to say. That is something Mm -hmm. a woman would say, (laughs) you know, in trying to reach him and she just can't reach him. And, And I found it exhausting, too. I, for her to keep on the same Mm -hmm. thing, trying to get through to him. But I think as time goes by, she realizes, you know, first she's just pissed because you just are, because you can't get through him and you don't know why. And I think those were the parts that really made me emotional when he, she says something to him and then he says, oh, she, she's yelling about the kids, mm-hmm. uh, about like, you know, I've left them for you. And, you know, why aren't you, why don't you, you asking about them mm-hmm. more? And he says, you don't think I want to be with you? And his voice kind of like breaks and yeah. he says it again. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. I was like, tears, tears. Yeah. It's just because it was heartbreaking because he loves her, but I can see her questioning him. Mm-hmm. I can totally see that. Cause you're like, well, if you love me, then just go with me. Let's what do this. Talking yeah. About? But yeah. And I'm not realizing yet the level of his PTSD mm-hmm. and his trauma yeah. yet, because like you said, we only know what we think we know. Mm-hmm. We don't know everything else. I mean, think about it. If you had really, you know, chopped your arm off and I mean, eight years mm-hmm. is a long time to be <laughs> in this place that is keeps you know dragging you down doing you know whatever it is especially with Rick because yes he probably could have led a decent life because some of the other people did but in his mind no I've got to get back to my family Mm -hmm. I've got to get back there this is my goal and so it's always hitting that brick wall of not being able to get out and you know having to deal with that Mm -hmm. oh because you were talking about the the helicopter and then she he finally tells her about Jadis and tells her all that. And that's what Mm -hmm. I appreciated too, was that whole story learning about that. I mean, we know that's what happened, but she doesn't know that's what happened. So she, yeah. So she's filled in on that and, oh, and then her trying to convince him, well, let's, what I think we had talked about, right. Let's go back and kill Jadis and then Mm -hmm. get the evidence and get rid of it. But he's still Mm -hmm. not, not going for it. And I think, that's when you start to realize there's more, there's mm-hmm. more as to why Rick isn't switching. Cause you're like, mm-hmm. what the heck is this? But she just says, I don't like who you are. And mm-hmm. then she leaves out the door. Oh my God. That moment when she walks out the door and she's pissed off because she yeah, yeah. grabs she's all done. the weapons, <laughs> whatever she's going to do. And she's walking out that door, goes out the door. And then he wants to, haven't you ever felt that where you like, 
you want to go after or go talk to the person that you really want to talk to, but something is just holding you back and yeah. you just can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. But he actually did do it and go mm -hmm. back out and thank God. And you know why he probably did it? I mean, of course, because he loves her, but I don't think he wanted her harmed by any yeah. of the walkers that were there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made it more immediate for him to, to walk out that door. So, and like you had mentioned, it just reminds you of real life because mm -hmm. this really does happen. So what did you think about with them fighting those walkers and, and dealing with the falling building and the falling chandelier and, mm -hmm. you know, just all of that? What did you think of well, that part of it? I meant, I, you know, I always feel, you know, they just fight so well together, you know, because they're just such a good team and that. So it was good. And I mentioned that last week's episode about how we love seeing them work together again. It was like, yeah. yes, we, we, we needed to see that, you know, because, you know, that's just, it's just so cool to see that. So yeah, it was some pretty tense moments going through all that, you know, but it was very interesting to see. And then, you know, of course, when you know, I'm yelling at him to go get her, you know, go after her, like open yes. the door, you know, <laughs> do it, do it. Oh. So of course he did, you know, and there isn't any question about whether or not they love each other. They do. They're just on different pages at the moment, you know, yes. and have yeah. experienced many different things. Like we said, she's really not changed a whole lot from the Michonne we knew. No. Mm -mm. but he most certainly has. He's not Rick Grimes, you know, he's soldier, whatever he's called right now. I love seeing them work together. And, you know, like Jadis has said that together they can do anything. And they proved that again, they got where they needed to be. And then they were able to, you know, come back and then they were there emotions and everything were so high that, you know, that led to their intimate scene, which I really appreciated that because it was, you know, like it was like their brush with death and it was like, Oh, we got to feel alive again. Yeah. kind of thing. Plus just where they're at in their relationship and everything they, they needed that. And it was his trauma and his fear of losing her again is, you know, consuming him. So it made the whole thing awkward but yet at the same time, yeah. it was so emotional and complex. And so, you know, there was just, you know, I read some negative things about it and I'm like, I don't know how people got like, I mean, I, I've been kind of negative about the episode, but I thought that was beautiful. No, you're done. not. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, Renee, I don't think you are. Good. You're okay. Negative I don't want to be negative. It's just, yeah. You're, you're, you're just saying that you were mad at rick for his decisions <laughs> but how is that that's not negative to me okay okay i, I don't think so anyway i'm picking on rick i don't want to you know <laughs> but i you know I, and i read some of denies comments about this up the scene you know and everything and so again like you mentioned reading those things you kind of appreciate some of this a little bit more because you can understand where she was coming from when she was writing this but right. she wrote it so yeah. real and I think again, this just goes back to it was a, a very well done, and it seemed like a real reaction experienced by a couple, you know, that have gone through some sort of trauma. It doesn't have to be this extreme; it could be something le a lot less yeah. extreme than an apocalypse, you know, to where yeah. the the intimacy is. It's something that's very needed because they're both very fragile, very that very vulnerable, you know, yeah. and it just, yeah. it just, yeah, she, she just did a fabulous job writing. Well, the whole episode she did well, because it felt like you said, it feels as, you know, a couple or whatever, it, it feels real, all of yeah. those things. So I really thought it was wonderful. And I think it was, we've all said, oh, this epic love story, epic love story. It, it was expected. Like, come on, we got to see, like you were saying about the bath or the shower or something, you know, it was like, <laughs> hey, when are we going to see this? Something has to happen between these characters, you know? So I thought it was very, very well done. Well, I think the timing was good because even though I thought about the shower scene yeah. earlier, that really wouldn't have worked mm -hmm. then. It no. would have been too soon. They needed to go through all of that back and forth that yeah. they went through. And they also needed to go out and fight those walkers and, mm -hmm. and be faced with that and be faced with the immediacy of one of them dying, of mm -hmm. her being trapped. And she's all, just go, just go. And he's yeah. all, I no. ain't ever leaving you. And she's all, oh, that's what I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And like he would ever leave her, never, never, <laughs> never. But still, I, I can understand her point of view because she's, I'm like, trapped. You're going to get yeah. killed by all these walkers. And, mm -hmm. you know, they figure it out just like they always have fighting mm -hmm. these walkers. And I think 
that, yes, that near death, you know, experience and all that adrenaline from fighting those walkers and, and everything that they did and so well as a team and then coming back and, oh my God, that moment when he just like puts his hand up next to her and they look at each other. I was melting, (laughs) man, I was melting. I was like, of course I was like a kid. I was like putting up my pillow, like, oh my God. I don't know. I felt like I was, you know, shouldn't be watching (laughs) what was happening, but yeah. And the fact that they did write that part where he hesitates and almost like he's having an anxiety attack Mm -hmm. and she puts his hand on, on her heart so that he can feel it, which eases him. And then, I mean, if you really think about it, it's been a long time, you know, Mm -hmm. unless either of them have been with somebody else, it's been eight years. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really long time. So, and, and I'm sure, you know, living in a zombie apocalypse, that's not the top forefront thing in your mind either. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're thinking I got to survive. I got to survive, yeah. but still, and then of course we do see that emotional moment between them after it's after that, correct. It's after that when I they start th- yeah. talking and mm-hmm. he breaks down and, yeah. and finally it's revealed mm-hmm. what he's afraid of. And it makes sense. And again, yeah. not, I mean, there are a lot of people that experience trauma. I haven't experienced trauma like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you hear about all these people, I'm going off the subject just for a second, because you mm-hmm. hear about all these people that are kidnapped or, you know, and, you know, stock, is it Stockholm syndrome? Is that what I'm thinking of? Or is that a different mm-hmm. one? That, anyway, that, yeah, that is the right one. You know, you, you start to believe in that or, or have some empathy or sympathy, sympathy for that. And then you get conditioned, mm-hmm. you get conditioned over and over and over and over again. And so I can understand Rick being afraid to feel Mm -hmm. And that's what he was protecting his, his afraid to lose them again, which Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about. And, you know, I want to go back to something you said last week, which I didn't realize until this episode. And actually my son brought it up to me too, is you had said about how he had forgotten, Rick had, had forgotten or couldn't recollect the exact details of, of Carl. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear that particularly, I thought it was the artist couldn't uh, replicate what Carl looked like to him. But you had said, oh, he couldn't remember the details or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And my son brought that up too. And I thought, oh, that must have been an important part that I didn't really catch Mm -hmm. last episode. But it makes sense with, with what he said. Mm -hmm. that he dreams about Carl and then now he stopped dreaming about Carl and then he was dreaming about Michonne and now he's not dreaming about her and he's just afraid to lose them. And man, Rick just breaking down like that. Mm -hmm. That was so his face. They both, they both were phenomenal. And if they don't get an Emmy nod, I'm going to be so (laughs) furious. Even the episode, if Denai doesn't Mm -hmm. get it for writing, I don't know. I'm just going to to be upset because they don't like, they never acknowledge the walking dead it's awful you know it is it is but i truly yeah truly think that they deserve it i i in my mind i had thought to myself i have never seen for me this is for me this is my favorite show ever and Mm -hmm. i watched a lot of shows through all the decades my favorite show ever which okay is no secret but this is probably my favorite episode. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because anything that makes me cry a mm-hmm. lot, <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just yeah. like I love Titanic. I love yeah. the notebook because <laughs> those just make me cry. Mm-hmm. This just had so much emotion. I was so in- invested. Someone told me, they said, you're so invested in these, you know, they're just characters. I'm like, of course I know that they're characters, but yes, I am invested in these characters. They, they are acted by these actors Mm -hmm. who also believe in these characters. And I just love the whole art form. So yes, I'm invested. (laughs) (laughs) And, and so, you know, it moves me in it. And I feel for them going through all of this. And so we also see Michonne's plea to Rick to, you know, 
protect the family and and their love and to to go with them. So then I think that go- segues right into the the conclusion about mm-hmm. making it out of the building. And so I want to know from you, what did you think of that whole section, making it out of the building? And if also, if you have any other tidbits you want to add mm-hmm. at the, this point. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was great because I mean, you know, we, it's their series. They're probably making it out of the building, but you know, you, you don't know. I mean, it's the walking dead who knows what could happen. Um, yeah. yeah. So I thought it was really good that they were able to share all that before they were, you know, that they're all like you had mentioned all the things they got to share and everything. It was very good for that. And then as they're, you know, leaving and everything, then it's like, okay, whew, okay, this is what they're going to do and everything like that. So it, you know, kind of like they're riding off into the sunset kind of thing and we'll see what happens next. You know, like overall, I just thought it was, you know, like Michonne said, they needed a timeout. <laughs> they needed yeah. this away from everything else, away from any responsibilities with their jobs and their thing, you know, back at the CRM and that's that they needed this time to hash out these things that were going both, you know, and to, you know, be truthful with each other and express their emotions, you know, in order to make any kind of future plan for what they're doing next yeah. because they were not on the same page. And so, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what happens next. <laughs> For sure. I do want to say, yeah, I think that they had to go through this. Mm -hmm. Like you had said last week, yeah, you couldn't imagine that she was just going to come save him. He was going to say, okay, let's go and let's go out of here. You had mentioned that it's very complex and Mm -hmm. it is because love is so complex Mm -hmm. and it's not always easy. So that just goes to show you how realistic to me this episode was. And because people always have a difference of opinions. Mm -hmm. And I I probably mentioned it before, but we had talked about when Daryl and, uh, oh, we didn't even talk about the scar and Daryl. I'm sorry. I have to bring that up right now. Yeah, yeah. So that whole part about he sees the scar Mm -hmm. on her and then he says, you know, what happened? And she explains what happened. I love that she actually explains it all. She doesn't just write it off with one sentence. She Mm -hmm. tells him what happened. She tells him that you know, Daryl was there, that Daryl had the same things. And of course, I love it that they're bringing up Daryl. Yeah. And, and that Judith was kidnapped and Mm -hmm. that she had to end up killing. At first, she said, I don't really want to talk about what happened. But then he says, oh, did you kill her? She's like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, okay. Um, And then also that she tells him, you know, I lied to you too. I haven't talked to Judith Mm -hmm. in a while wow, yeah. so you know the all the more that she wants to go back mm-hmm. and I love how many times she brought up the kids because yeah. I think it's important because you had mentioned how people were kind of saying well how did Michonne just leave mm-hmm. her kid well she's showing you multiple times through this episode what she gave up to go look for him and that's mm-hmm. why she pissed because she goes, you think I'm not beating myself up that I left my kids yeah. by you and you're giving me all this shit. I can't even get you to come back with me. So I liked that she brought up the kids repeatedly. And she had talked about the eight, you know, how mm-hmm. RJ is, is eight. And, oh, and then when they were in bed together, the next, well, not the next day, it feels like the next day, mm-hmm, right? Yeah. But when they're kind of cuddling there and he, and Rick, oh, I also wanted to bring that up. But when Rick says, oh, so RJ is good looking if he looks like yeah. me or something. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just so funny because there were moments throughout this episode, even though it was so heavy with emotion, there were comical moments. Mm-hmm. Like when yeah. they were both killing that one walker and one of them says, I got it. Well, I had it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then also when Rick uses the terms, the CRM would use, and she calls them commando. And then they both kind of like snicker under their breath, what the yeah. other said. It was like funny because I, I loved those little moments because mm-hmm. it, it was good. We needed mm-hmm. that yeah. levity to all this, you know, heartbreak and emotion and mm-hmm. everything else that was there. And that reminded me when you said that we the we got clarification that it was a year that her and Nat uh, com- they convalesced from that exposure to the chlorine gas. It was a year. Yeah. We at first we thought it was a few months, but she said it was a year. She said, I, year. "Yeah, I thought I had read somewhere a year, but mm-hmm. I wasn't for sure." 
Mm-hmm. I wa- and I realize now that you had mentioned a couple months mm-hmm. and I, it didn't even dawn on me. I just, mm-hmm. cause I have no idea. We just saw seasons pass. So I had right, no idea. Didn't know, but no, I like that. She clarified that in this episode also, yeah. because it was like, holy buckets. That's a, you know, that's a year of her life trying to yeah. get well enough to continue whichever home or with the, to find Rick, whatever she was going to do. That's yes. a long time. So anyway, I just yeah. wanted to mention that also, cause that was a good clarification as well. I know learning of all mm-hmm. how long something really is, you mm-hmm. know, the fact that she says, Oh, I'm, I was pregnant with RJ when we were on the bridge and now he's eight years old. It's like, uh, I don't know. Something feels good about knowing the time frame and how long yeah. Yeah. it has been. It just feels good for some yeah. reason. <laughs> all right. Did you have any other tidbits before we get to our favorite moments and predictions? Is there anything so. else you want to say about this episode? I'm sure we're going to have a bunch afterwards because I always, we always wrap up and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. But we are at the segment and the award goes to, and I would love to know what was your favorite quote, character, or moment? I'll have to say that I loved it when Michonne just loses it and she's like, I'm not going to be the one to tell them that I found their father and he sent me away and, and chose not to come home to them. And she's like, really not meaning to reveal RJ at this. You could tell by her look. He's like children. And she went, you could see that look on her face. She was not ready to tell him yet, but it yeah. just came out of her. So I just loved that. It was just this emotional, oh, you know, I'm so frustrated with you. And you're going to be the one to tell them, the kids, you know, that you are yeah. the one saying all this stuff. So I just love that as a mom, you know, I can understand. I mean, you can understand her frustration. You know, it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> you've got so much to come back yeah. to and you're just not listening. <laughs> so I just, I just love, love that. I thought that quote was so great. I love that part too. And I'm so glad you brought it up because we didn't actually specifically talk about it. Yeah when she told him Mm -hmm. and you know, the, the, the thoughts that must've gone through his head, even though he wasn't really revealing it. I mean, he has a son, Mm -hmm. a son Mm -hmm. with her. Yeah. There. Oh man. (laughs) Yeah. Oh. And when he was, when he was crying, Sam, here's that other moment when he was upset and breaking down and he said, Oh, you're, you know, you're the love of my life. I saw where people were posting, oh, that's an insult to Lori. And I'm thinking, no, not really. Yeah. (laughs) Not really. Yeah. Never thought she was the love of his life. (laughs) Well, it's interesting because people wrote that or that was the Mm -hmm. heading. But what everybody said in that was no. (laughs) Well, Mm -hmm. do you remember it was a couple of weeks or what? And she was with Shane and, and just all the, now, mind you, I don't, hate Lori. I'm okay with Lori. I, I understand. I was okay. I think I was more okay with Lori than other people were with Mm -hmm. her. I didn't love her, but I thought she was fine. And I did feel bad when she did die because I was Carl's mom and, 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 and Rick still loved her. It was his wife. But when Rick was laid up in that hospital. She didn't even, as far as we know, go back to the hospital mm-hmm. to look for him. And here's Michonne has traveled eight years <laughs> to get to him and through all kinds of things. And that is true, true love. And so, yeah. So I love that he said that about her also. Of mm-hmm. course, Denai wrote that. So she's all, yeah, I'm going to be your uh, true love. Yeah. <laughs> but my favorite part is all of it. Really it is. But I would say if I had to pick a part, I would say when she hands him the phone that has Carl in it. Mm -hmm. And also when he tells her about the dreams and, and we get flashbacks of him and Carl, Mm -hmm. there's just something about Rick and Carl's that little boy walking. Mm -hmm. Uh, It just moves me. It just Mm -hmm. moves me. And just seeing uh, Carl with his hat on as a young teen. And the fact that Carl is the one that has, I think, shaken Rick up. Like it, it, it took talking about Carl, you know, Rick telling her, I stopped dreaming about him. And then for her to give him that phone with the etching and, and to know that it was important even for her and yeah. even that Denai wrote that in this. So Carl is, is, was the key, I think, in all of this, because they both want to honor him. Mm-hmm. It was his son, her, actually her son too, and yeah. her best friend. So mm-hmm. I just love that part. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was really cool. I love that she had that phone. I was like, oh. (laughs) Yeah, I love that she had it and she gave it to him. (laughs) Oh, man. I think it was so good. All right. So tell me with the trailers. First, it looks good. And then Michonne says something. I'm not sure what's happening. So what are you hoping for for the next episode? And do you have any predictions? So I just feel like watching the trailer and hearing Michonne say, this can't end with us going home. That negates everything that happened in this episode, in episode four. And I'm like, obviously, it's out of context. We don't know anything. And I'm sure that's what it is. So we'll see. But what I love about this ep- this series is we as viewers have no clue where it's going next. We literally, every time we're like, speculate, do whatever, it's not even close. <laughs> I mean, there's this whole, you know what I mean? Nope. I appreciate that so much about this because a lot of times series just get very predictable and you're just like, oh yeah, that guy's doing this and that's going to happen and boom, there it is. So this is, it's, it's just so refreshing, you know that it, we just don't know. It's always shock and surprise, you know, like them in this apartment thing that I didn't, I mean, I, we knew it was a Rashon centric episode, but we didn't have a clue. They're going to be in this, you know, apartment with electricity and water. And all. this is how that was going right. to be. You imagine it in the woods and them, you know, grumping to each other along the way or whatever it is. And so this, it was just, I just love that about this episode, this series. And so, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what to expect just from the trailers. I know the, that Walker with the, she like tries to hit its head. Did you see that? And she's like, no, you know, no. there's, Oh, she says like, something about it's cemented or something. Or, or, I don't know what she says. Know. Yeah. But it's like, she's trying to stab its head and she can't, it's like rocker. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and so, yeah. So anyway, there's, you know, a lot of stuff going on and there's two of those first look images for the episode that AMC released where Michonne has a gun in both, you know, it's like, Oh, like one, she's got a big gun. One, she's got a handgun. And it's like, Oh, <laughs> but we don't see Rick does have a, a, a injury on his head. So I don't know where that came from, but there's a couple of those images where he's got the, you know, blood that's not life threatening or anything, but something happens, you know? So yeah. I don't know where it's going, but I am excited to find out. What about the dark, cloaked person yeah yeah that's right I forgot about that I was like is this a whole new person or is it a is this the cameo everybody's been waiting on or right you know because I we don't from this episode we don't know where they are they you know are they close back to Philadelphia are they still in wherever they were it was Oregon Washington wherever they were they still there you know I'm I don't know. So it's hard to say who that is, you know, another bad guy, which you would think they wouldn't introduce that in the second and the penultimate, you know, penultimate episode. But yeah. Well, I I have no idea. I know people are like, oh, could it be Morgan or whoever else? But no, because I feel like it isn't because Mm -hmm. of what they do show us seems more like they go through some extremes because first they're kind of like, embracing each other and then later on it's what she has Mm -hmm. said about oh we can't go back but again that could be like right now we can't go back like Mm -hmm. we need to finish something before we go back i'm sure it's oh but no oh but what if that person is jadis and what if that's the confrontation and maybe they have to go back to get rid of the Mm -hmm. evidence that she left Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah to get her i don't know Mm -hmm. yeah I don't know. So, I mean, (laughs) Jadis is somebody that they do have to deal with. So Mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see. I don't know. Two more episodes. I don't want it to be over. I don't know what's going to happen after episode six. It's just going to be heartbreaking. I don't know. I don't, I really don't know, but I'm loving it. I love every single episode. It has been the best. It's everything that I've wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. So they better just keep it up. That's what I have to say <laughs> about that. Oh, one last thing. When they get in that car to to drive off and oh, Rick gets in and he's all, it's a stick shift. And then they have to crawl Switch. over each yeah. other and they each other as on their way. That's hilarious. I yeah. love that. So I want to say that Andrew Lincoln, Rick Grimes looks good in a sweatshirt, but of course he looks good almost at any. He has, but I love he's wearing just the sweatshirt. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, we don't. She'll look good too in her outfit. But yeah, yeah, she always looks good too, though. (laughs) Yeah, 
people did. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So very cool. All right. That is our wrap up of episode four. It'll go down in my books as the best episode ever. (laughs) All right. So come back next week for episode five, where we break it all down. Okay. Switching gears. I would love to know, Renee, if you've watched anything, any, and if you have any TV or movie recommendations. Well, I've been watching, you know, we're working through Abbott Elementary season two, trying to get through that. I haven't, we haven't finished it, of course, but yeah. So that's one TV show. I just think that show, have you watched any of that yet? I haven't. And I know I'm supposed to, and I, I, I'll get to it. I just yeah, haven't gotten to it yet. I know it's I good. Recommend. I know it it's is. It's so but, good. Yeah. I think yeah. you'll really enjoy it. There's the character. There's so many great characters and it's just, it's just very well done. Yeah. I, I love it a lot. Yeah. I, the My husband and daughter watch it with me. That's kind of our nightly, you know, one new episode that we sit together and watch yeah. it. And then I watch a couple movies. So one that's on Netflix, it's actually an older movie. It's called Wonderlust. Have you watched that one before? With Paul, I Rennie. did a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought I did, but then, and I always, I always loved Paul Rudd and Jennifer Aniston. I was like, oh, you know, and, and anyway, it was really cute. And they, they're a couple, and they fall on hard times, and they come to kind of this like commune kind of place, and just things that play out and things like that. But it was, you know, good, good actors and characters in it. Catherine Hahn is in it, and Alan Alda is in it, and you know, just. It, yeah, it, it was it was good. I enjoyed that one a lot. And then I've been waiting for Irish Wish to come out on Netflix. Yeah, me too. Because you know Lindsay Lohan's fine. I have nothing, you know. But I was really it's it's Ed Spielers so that that's who I was excited because I'd never seen him in a, like a rom com because he was, I saw him on he was an Outlander and he played a really bad guy in Outlander and then he was on Downton Abbey. He played one of the footmen or whatever. And so that's the parts I've seen him in. So I was excited to see him in this. Wait. Who is he in Outlander? Is he the Pirate. guy? Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Without spoiling it for anybody. Yeah, else. I know. I don't He's the bad, it. the bad guy, bad right? Guy. Yes, yes. I, I know who you're talking about. Oh, not the worst guy. Too- okay, wait, not the yeah, worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the worst guy, but a bad right. guy. But yes. the bad guy. Yeah. So I was really excited to see him in a. You know, not in the a guy movie. with the dad, but the guy with the daughter. Correct. The guy that impacts yeah. the daughter. Yes. 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 Okay. That's the one. Horrible guy. Anyway. <laughs> but yes. So I was really excited to see him in this. And you know, it was it was really good. And it was kind of cute and things like that. But they just, I didn't feel like they had the chemistry that I wanted them to have, like on a, in a rom-com. You know, like when you, you're watching a rom-com and you know who's going to end up together. And you want to root for them. And yeah. it was like, okay, yeah, well, all right. I, I don't know. I mean, it was a cute movie and maybe I just was in the wrong mood for it because a lot of people have loved it. So I maybe I was just in a mood. I don't know. And then I watched Happiness is for Beginners, which has Ellie Camper and Luke Grimes in it. And I have been dying to see that one also. And that was pretty cute too. Yeah. Again, I wasn't as excited well, as I thought I would be, I guess, you know, right. it was, yeah. but it was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So anyways, so yeah, so I actually wrote them down this time and I remembered to do it so that I could tell you what I have to sit here thinking. I don't remember. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have seen all three of those. So, <laughs> and I, I'm on the same wavelength of, of view uh, as far as those. I mean, they're good. They're good. Yeah. They're watchable, but they're mm-hmm. not like, mm, do I want to keep watching them? Probably mm-hmm. not, but they're good for yeah. a first watch. There are some movies that I watch and I'm, I don't like them at all. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. But no, these are, these are above that. These are very yeah. watchable. And I'm I'm glad I watched them. So for me, actually, I don't really have too much that's new. Love is Blind season six. I told you I've been watching it. Well, the reunion just came out Mm. and whoa, it was a whopper. And I have come to know that this season six, I think a lot of people are watching because I hear Mm -hmm. buzz all over the place about it. So even Jimmy Fallon is reenacting (laughs) scenes from it. That's funny. (laughs) So, you know, when that happens... (laughs) it's uh it's touched upon something so yeah. it's it's been quite amusing and it was interesting to find mm-hmm. out about all these couples the good thing or the highlight or the nice thing is there are couples that have mm-hmm. stayed together they have passed people from other seasons on the mm-hmm. show too that have stayed married and connected and are having children so it's nice it's nice mm-hmm. at least there is a happy ending there i'm continuing with shameless i'm only on season 2 but toward the end and I'm I, I'm really starting to feel it now where I like, oh, I want to go watch it. Oh, I want to go watch it. Yeah. But I normally watch it 
after I've watched my main show. So Mm -hmm. I do like it. I do Mm -hmm. like Shameless. And, but it's just going to take me a while to get through it because there's so many mm-hmm. seasons. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Do it. yeah. So I'll be continuing. And I had started to watch True Detective season one, I think right after you had finished it. Mm-hmm. And we are watching it sort of as our Saturday night movie mm-hmm. in place of our Saturday night movie. So we only watch two episodes, which amounts yeah. to about two hours. So mm-hmm. we are on our home stretch. Mm-hmm. And I'm reminded because I watched it 10 years ago and I'm reminded of what the happenings are. And yeah, I'm, I'm invested in this too. I'm like, what's going to happen? I can't remember. So it's yeah. been very, very good. And I'm glad I'm watching it again. It reminds me what good actors Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey are. And so good. Yeah. So it's, it's just uh, really well done. So check it out if you haven't seen that. And my movie was Irish Wish on Netflix. And I do want to say, I do like Lindsay Lohan though. Mm -hmm. I think if it had been somebody else, maybe I wouldn't have been as interested or maybe it carried it through, but I do like her and I like watching her. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. So if for anything that watch it for her, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I liked it. All right. I thought the overall story was really cute. I thought it was a cute premise. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so anyone who doesn't know it, I, first I thought it was about like my best friend's wedding. I thought it was Mm going to be like that. Like you want to be married to this person, but she ends up going to Ireland and making a wish on a rock Mm -hmm. and saying that she wants to be married to him. And, and what if that were to happen basically? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So, and it's interesting how they showed how some things are kind of meant to be in that. Right. It's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, how things shift. Even if yeah. you want them to be a certain way, which is kind of cool because I think that would happen. Yeah, <laughs> I really do. <laughs> so very cute. All right. Well, friends out there, if you have any recommendations for us, we would love to hear about them. And you can call us at Google Voice 669 223 8542. That phone number is in our show notes. And also, you can reach out to us on social media. And again, all those links are at screensandfocus.com. Renee, thank you so much again for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me as always. It was so fun talking about this episode because I knew you were going to be so excited about it. So <laughs> I knew I would feed I all your excitement. <laughs> yeah, I still think you're not a hater at all. <laughs> I just want to tell you. Okay, good. <laughs> You were valid, very valid. Okay. And okay. all, all, everything that you said. So, <laughs> and I appreciate it too. Cause I, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's, it's good to get that other side and other perspective. So thank yeah. you. Thank you today for joining us. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> all right, friends out there. Thank you for joining us today. We are grateful you joined us and we hope something that we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity or inspiration. Don't forget to subscribe to our website at screensinfocus.com because we would love more members of our TV club. You can find our website link in the show notes. And remember to keep watching, keep exploring, and keep those screens in focus. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.